may be a hard saying. This may be a hard saying for some of us. I believe that in this current season we are coming into, if you cannot show your spiritual father the house you belong, you may be considered as one who is illegitimate to function in the current move of God. Mm. Are you hear what I'm saying? Because you cannot show who is your father. Or rather, let me break it down to a simple term. Which church do you belong to? Since that is the general, general religious terms that you, we use now. Which church do you belong to? Or who is your pastor? Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, in those days, in the early days, not in, in not currently it has changed. It, it has some legitimacy then, but along the line it became a hindrance. It's the fact that in those days, some churches will not allow you to minister on their platform except you show what bible school did you go to yeah who what trained you, you or with denomination yeah. because they want to see whether you are bringing a true doctrine to the house mm. or you are bringing a false doctrine yeah and therefore if you are not trained in the line of the direction you cannot be a part of what they are doing yeah I, no, along the line, it became a hindrance in the fact that they began to stand against true men of God that come. But the yeah. truth of the principle is that I believe these things are spiritual. Yeah. We have a lot of believers who are running around in the name of the Lord, but have no attachment to anybody. Yeah. Or to any, any, any family, spiritual family. We must understand this restoration that is taking place. It's not about control. It's not about manipulation. It's not about dictating for your marriage or whatever it is. It is part of the concept and the principle of Christ for his kingdom, for those who are truly sons or those who can be counted in this season that we are in. I think it's one of the things that stood out to me when you were talking about discipline, and I think it's important that we clarify it, that part. is that when we talk about discipline, we're not talking about something punitive mm -hmm. while there might be times where where correction comes in a way that that does have to be a, it a looks like that yeah but the the heart of discipline in in this circle we often talk about the idea of coaches and players mm. you know a coach brings discipline to his players and asks great things of them you know i want you to run more laps i want you to do more push-ups so and he presses them and he pushes them and by doing so he's disciplining his players but he's doing so that they can win the flag or you know win the game and and paul talks about this as well he he says you know these these races they they run for a prize that's going to to disappear one day but we run for a prize that's eternal mm. and and so because of that i beat my body daily mm. into submission mm. so that i can obtain the prize and that i myself having preached the gospel am not disqualified myself and and so there's this idea that 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 the disciplining that is coming is not about you're a bad boy, you're a bad girl, and I'm going to tell you that what you've done is wrong. It's not about that at all. It's I can see something in mm. you. I can perceive a call of God on your life, perhaps greater than you can even perceive yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I'm going to place a demand on, on you, you. Yeah. That, that might feel painful. At, at the time, moment, yep. but I'm, I'm doing that because I believe that by doing so, I'm going to bring forth something that is going to make you a champion of mm. the faith. And, and that is what so many people don't understand about spiritual discipline. And so even when it's, it's, it's not punitive, it's just corrective, they react in rebellion. Because how dare you tell me? How, how dare you put a hand on me? What right do you have? And it's like, actually, I've got no right other than that which God has given me and other than that which he has shown me for your life. And you would actually do well to submit to it so that it'll bring forth the very thing that you're hungering mm, for. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> there's a phrase, there's an African phrase we always say, what a man sees sitting, a child cannot see standing. Yeah. In other words, a child may think that he knows all things, but the wisdom of an elderly man, or by use mm. the wisdom of one who is experienced, because he has gone through that route before, mm. and he can tell you. Are you with me? Yeah. So, the heart of discipline, or the heart of discipleship, is not to destroy you, but to make you. Mm. This is why the heart of every true father, every true spiritual father, or kingdom leader, must be or flow from love. Yeah. Yeah. If I am a spiritual father and truly love my son, my correction is not to destroy them, but to make them. Yeah. The heart of every true leader that loves the church, loves the saint, will not be to destroy them, but to make them. That is why they correct them. And the yeah. Bible says in the book of Hebrews that any father who truly loves his son will always correct the son. Yeah. And correction is... Is what the scripture say is a validation of your authenticity that you are truly a son. Yeah. But if you are not disciplined, it means that your father doesn't love you. And the yes. King James Version uses this word, yeah. which I'm not swearing, but the King James Version says you are a bastard. Yeah. One translation say you are an illegitimate child. Yeah. In other words, one translation says it means that you are a child that is not in covenant. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we are members in church. There are some folks that you just look at them, you know what? You just leave them. It shows that you don't love them. Or if it, it should be that there is no room for rebellion in the house. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So people of God, please, let's, let's bring this issue of discipleship into perspective in line with the desire of God for us. Mm. So that when we leave this place, number one, as leaders here in this, our goal should be to make disciples. Mm. Then number two, those of us who are not leaders, who are members of a local assembly, my desire is to submit myself to truly become a disciple. Mm. That what to be a disciple means to be a student. It means to be a learner. It means to be a follower. And the goal of every student is to become like the teacher. Yeah. The goal of discipleship is to become like Christ. Mm. Come on, are, are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. So that we can do better and be effective in our lives and in our ministry. The question remain again, like I said yesterday, is this. That we must ask ourselves. Uh, I, I said, a true father will always seek and desire to see their sons grow into maturity yeah. and become a father, not to remain children. Yeah. In other words, it is a circle of reproduction or a generational process. Yeah. So therefore, you and I must ask these two questions. Number one, you must be able to show who has discipled you, either as a leader or as a believer. Who is your spiritual father? Who is your pastor? Who are you accountable to? Mm. Who is that man that can speak into your life or speak into your marriage? Who is that man that you can submit yourself to to bring correction to you? Mm. Not a man that you make suggestion to, but a man that you listen to and follow the instructions. And sometimes his instructions may not be in line with your expectation. But because yeah. you honor the grace of God upon his life, you will choose to obey what he has said, even though it's not convenient for you, but it is for your good. Mm. Number two, not only should you be able to show who is your, this, who has discipled you, you must be able to show who are you discipling. Mm. Are you with me? Rebels will always produce rebels. Yeah. Did you hear what I, what I just said? People who are rebels will always produce what? Rebel. What you sow is what you reap. Yeah. If you are not a disciple, you can never disciple others. Mm. I want to say that again. If yeah. you are not a disciple, you can never disciple others. Because you can only reproduce after your kind or by the impartation of the grace of God upon your life. 
Who is pouring? Some people think that eh, the Holy Spirit is the one giving me revelation directly. If the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you revelation directly only, there will not be a need for God setting five-foot ministry in the church to equip you. Yeah, that's right. We must understand the, the flow of God. Yes, God is our Father. God is our spiritual capital letter F, Father. Yeah. But there are men on earth that he has released what I call a transcending grace to represent him on earth. Your ability to submit to this man is your submission to God. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? Because some people don't want to submit to anybody, but they want to submit to God. How is it that you despise the authority that God has set in place, and yet you say you want to relate to God? Yeah. It's just, it just, it, it's like scripture said. How can you say you love God whom you don't see, but your brothers and sisters whom you see, you don't love them? Mm. The scripture said, no, you are a liar. Yeah. Anyone who loves his brother and his sister loves God. Anyone who hates his brother and his sister, you hate God. So how do I measure your love for God? It is not by your lip service, it is by your action. But the scripture says love is not in words, but love is what? In action. The yeah. demonstration of that action to our brother. The same thing it comes to submit on, submission to spiritual authority. Jesus looked at them and said, I do not do anything of my own. Yeah, that's right. What I see my father, father do doing is what I do. Yeah. I do not say anything I want to say. What I hear my father say is what I say unto you. But it goes on. As the father has sent me, now I am sending you. Yeah. I'm sending you. Now listen to me. Anyone who receives me receives my father who sent me. But anyone who rejects me rejects my father. And he looks at his disciple. He said, I am commissioning you and sending you. Anyone who receives you, they are receiving me. Yeah, exactly. And anyone who rejects you, they are rejecting me. Remember, in that same order, if you reject me, you reject the father. If you receive me, you receive the father. So your ability to submit to a God-sent leader is your submission to Christ and to God. And we, we actually do see this. There's so many healthy examples of mm. that. Like when you meet someone who has been genuinely discipled by a good leader, mm. you can tell who's discipled them by what they say and how they say it. It, it's, it comes out. Mm. It, you know, you, I've, many years ago, I remember a, a young man that, that my father mm. discipled. And the first time he gets up to preach... Mm. He's moving his hands like my father did. Mm. And he's using phrases that my father would use. He even hitched his trousers like, <laughs> like my father would. And it was so clear that he was a disciple. Cyborg, yep. and, I, and sometimes we look at that and go, oh, he, he's making a clone. No, he's not. Because everyone that, that is genuinely discipled properly will pass through this process mm where first they're taking on those those attributes whether it's the revelation the teaching the methodologies mm. they will take those on and they'll operate through those but from that that becomes the, the platform or the launching pad that they then move into their own revelation their own ministry exactly. their own methods it is born out, out of, of what has been placed in their life as a foundation that is what paul said follow me as a follow Christ. Yeah. One translation says, imitate me. Imitate me. Just as I imitate Christ. Mm. Now, the contents, the context of that phrase is not, it Paul is doesn't become like me. But rather, he say, follow my example. Yeah. Just as I'm following Christ, I want you to follow him like that. Follow my example yeah. the way I follow him. Yeah. Now, please, really good. The point here I want you to get also is that we must serve with the right heart and with yeah. the right attitude. Yeah. And when we serve with the right heart and with the right attitude, we will be able, in quote, to break that orphan mentality and resist 
the influence of an orphan spirit in our lives. Yeah. In other words, we'll be able to break the curse. Every true son or every true disciple will serve with the right heart and with the right motive. Like I said, true submission and in obedience. Mm -hmm. I am not what I am today because uh, I have this great revelation from God directly without any man. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, the scriptures say, there is nothing that you have received that you have not received from another. Yeah. Scripture. They say there is nothing that you have received that you have not received from another. In other words, even the revelation flows from somebody else. Yeah. I sit down with my brother in our in, in our in our fellowship and in our discussion. He yeah. says something and suddenly the spirit of God ministered to me. Now, yeah, I know. Let me write this down. I, I, Let me write this yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I know the Spirit of God is one minister, but how did it come? It came through Him to me. Quickly, yeah. I take it out. I write it down. Yeah. And whether you like it or not, tomorrow I will sell the book to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just from sitting with you and having this discussion, we may be yeah. talking about marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's good. That's good. There are some. You, you realize that while we are having this conversation, he's talking. Mm. You see me going back and type. Oh, that's so good, man. I'm putting some phrase and some things down. Mm -hmm. I, I, are you catch what I'm saying? So let us not be. Let us not be so arrogant. Arrogant. I, 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 I like try not to use the word. I don't like to get people offended. I'm, I'm from Africa. Yeah. And there's some words we just use and we we we're free to go with it. Yeah. But you come into another nation, they get offended by, by using that word. I remember yeah. the first time I traveled to the, to the States. I went to this church to preach. I was so excited. Preaching, preaching. After I finished preaching. And now the pastor of the church, he's a woman. And she stood up and said, I hope you know that uh, uh, the apostle is not cursing. It's not swearing or, or saying offensive words. But I was like, wonder, what did I say? What did I, what did I do? Well, she, she just make corrections. Yeah, 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 we understand. Because it's from Africa, so they use that in their conversation. I said, beautiful. When we went for meals, we sat down and said, like, well, what is it? So I was actually making reference to Genesis chapter number one, where I made this, I put it this way. Genesis chapter number one, verse one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Full stop. Genesis 1-1. One, one. Yeah. I said, everything, you believe that everything God created was good and perfect. So if in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, full stop, it means when God created the heavens and the earth, it was perfect. But verse number two, he said, and the earth became without form and void. The King James Version. But the original translation, the earth was without form. Or the original translation said, the earth came without form. So in other words, it was with form. Yeah. But it became without form void and empty it was in a chaotic state but the spirit of god began to move upon the face of the earth and god spoke and things began to come back into order or alignment it means that in the beginning it was not so something happened to the earth that made it to become without form and void yeah in trying to explain that i said when you read down to verse 26 and god said let us make man Okay, and let them have dominion. Let them, uh, uh, God bless them, say have dominion, be fruitful. But he used one word that the king just said, replenish the earth. That word re, there's a prefix there, re. Yeah. In other words, the earth was plenished before. Yes. Something happened to it. And the Lord said, your mandate is to replenish it back. Yeah. So I try to explain, I say, something happened to the earth. This is the work of the devil. That wants to destroy what God has created that was beautiful and perfect. But of course, I made reference to the fact that, you know, there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where the intent of Lucifer was to overthrow God. But he was cast down to the earth. I made the phrase. I said, the reason why God cast him down to the earth is that God looked at Lucifer and said, You are too small for me to discipline you for your disobedience. But the man that I'm going to create in my likeness and image, he will discipline you for your disobedient but i use the word is going to be the one who is going to whip you for your disobedience but i use a particular phrase yeah. in the american said it was like oh 
I, I, I was swearing or whatever it is. So they explained that to me. Told me back home in Africa, you know, it's like that is normal to us. We use a particular phrase and people don't get offended. It's normal. But I realized that I have to learn some things when I come to certain culture and yeah. certain places to be careful with my words. Sometimes I make, I make a phrase, I make a joke. Some of you are looking at me strangely. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they don't understand. And sometimes they are still and make their joke. I'm like, what did you say? Yeah. yeah. You know, but what I'm trying to do is that. And, and let's face it, what we're talking about today, yeah. discipline, yeah. will make a lot of people. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and that is the truth of the matter why a lot of people don't stay in church. Yeah. You have a lot of people who have an independent spirit today. They, yeah. want, they don't want to be a part of any local church or anybody. They see that at all. They don't, don't. And I say, listen to me. You cannot be connected to the head, Christ, without being connected to the body. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you are disconnected from a local, in quote, you call it church. The church is not the four world. The people are the church. Yeah. So you must change your concept of church to people and say, I don't want anything to do with the church. It means that I don't want anything to do with the body of Christ. And you want to stay in your house and have your own time alone with your family with Christ. It's not possible. No. The function, the dynamics of the functioning of the body of Christ is that we all must unite, come together. Yeah. Your disconnection from the body is actually the work of the devil trying to separate you from the body yeah. in disguise that the church is Babylon. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we must overcome that mindset and allow that process of being disciplined. Yeah. The English word for discipleship, it means discipline. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, well, you know, I don't, I don't like want to go to church because, you know, it's full of hypocrites. And I'm, it's like, well, come along, you'll just make it that little bit more hypocritical and we'll all move on together. You know, it's just... Now, now I understand that some of these churches have issues, okay? Yeah. Let, let, let's, yeah, yeah. Let, let's get that. There's, there's some issues with some of the churches. And sometimes there's a need for us to separate ourselves from that particular so-called congregate expression yeah but let us not separate ourselves from that particular expression that is corrupt and not find another family that we are connected to that is the, yeah. that is the point i'm trying to and i'm trying to bring are you catching yeah, what i'm yeah. saying i'm not saying now you must go and associate yourself with all kinds of uh, so-called church and get involved in corruption no 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 find one that is truly of christ and connect yourself with yeah. There are people in this city that are of God because sometimes we can be like Elijah who think, Lord, I am the only, only one man. that is left. Mm. And God said, Keep quiet. I have 7,000 that I have kept that you don't know of. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. So I may think that I'm the only apostolic leader in this city. I'm making a big mistake. Mm -hmm. There are others that God has kept from the system of Babylon but there's an appointed time God will begin to manifest them and we must pray that God connect us to these folks yeah. or to these people so that we can build a synergy to advance the kingdom of God. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you. Thank you.